Hey everybody, Scott Sprinta here, DocSports.com with our update for Friday, September 20th, 2019. Got a free pick coming up in college football, Friday Night Football in just a moment. First, a couple of quick notes. If you've yet to become a member over at DocSports.com, just want to give it a trial run, click on the link below the video. Get yourself set up for a free $60 account. Use that free $60 bucks on any of my daily packages or anybody else over at DocSports.com. Again, all you got to do to give DocSports.com a trial run, cool way to do it, free $60. $60 account. It comes with the Doc Sports guarantee, despite the fact that it is a free account, free $60 account. And again, all you got to do to get started, click on the link below the video. All right, enough of that. We're going to get to everything that's going on for Friday in just a moment. I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. We keep a pretty steady level headed view on wins and losses, on lucky wins, on bad beats, on bad losses. Uh, but last night, after uh, going through it with Northwestern against Stanford a few weeks ago in that fumble return by Stanford in the closing seconds, well, the gambling gods decided that wasn't enough. They were going to do it to us one more time. And it wasn't a big play last night, but it was a play nonetheless on the Houston Cougars. And if you happen to see the game, you watch SVP or whatever, you saw how they failed to cover that spread, not only up by two touchdowns at halftime or whatever, up by 21 points at one point. Uh, the fact that they gained almost 600 yards but missed two fields field goals, including a chip shot. I uh, had a chance to wrap it up at the end of the game, and they drop a wide open pass in the end zone, end up tying the game instead of taking the lead, which would have wrapped up the cover no matter what Tulane did when they got the ball back with a minute or less to go. And then unable to make tackles over the final 20 yards or so of a pass that was thrown from midfield, caught around the 20 of Houston, and then you had guys falling off uh, the receiver as though he had Crisco oil spread from head to toe. Just pathetic. And you end up losing the game, does Houston, with three seconds left in the game. Uh, instead, if they make the tackle when two or three guys have a chance, they kick a field goal, Houston covers the spread. I don't usually complain, but uh, after Northwestern a couple of weeks ago and suffering a couple of defeats in the final 30 seconds of a game against the spread wise, you get a little ticked off once in a while. I got to tell you this much, guys. If this would have been 20 years ago, I probably would have had a TV and a couple of uh, kitchen chairs in the pool. Instead, we just kind of try to keep it all in and uh, turn that uh, anger and frustration into better things. And in fact, we just jump right back into the game sometimes after taking about a 90 minute break uh, to think things through. But I've uh, been doing this for a long time and uh, I'd be in, the, uh, in a padded cell if I got too emotional on wins and losses. That's why when people always say to me, they're like, gosh, we see you have a, a huge win or we see you have a bad beat and you seem like the same on the videos every day. You got to be that way in this business if you've been doing this as long as I have. I've been doing this since my early 20s. I'm now 52. So there you go. Uh, but again, enough bitching and complaining. Uh, but that just felt like something I wanted to get off my chest with the Houston Cougars last night. If you had Tulane, congrats. Take the win and don't apologize and take that money. Cash that ticket and run in the other direction. If you had Houston like I did, it was a tough beat. But uh, Listen, you got to make those tackles on that last play. Got to catch a wide open pass in the end zone. How about making a chip shot field goal? All of the above, they get the cover. Time to move on. And I've got a free pick coming up in college football in just a moment. Pac-12 Friday night battle between Utah and USC. We'll get to that. But here's what's going on for me at DocSports.com over the next couple of days. First of all, we cashed again in baseball on Thursday. That's good news. And we've won 61% of our premium baseball releases in the entire month of September. 61% have gone in the win column. I've got a play on Friday in Major League Baseball, one premium pick. I'm also in CFL action on Friday. 63% this season in the CFL, 112 and 77 in the Canadian Football League long term. We've got a play this week, one play this week, and it goes on Friday night in the CFL. So don't miss out. Baseball, CFL, both on Friday. Uh, about to give you the college football play for Friday night in just a minute. As far as the WNBA, they're off for a couple of days. They'll be back on Sunday when the playoffs resume. Uh, but again, wanted to mention our record, even with that loss by Houston, regular season run going back to last year sits at 35 and 24 in college, 159 and 113 is the long-term run. And the NFL, 62 and 41 with a few pushes with the last 100 in 506 plays, 60% of the NFL. And the reason I bring it up is because this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, we've got plays in both college football and the NFL 
Seven plays to go, by the way, uh, and we still got our seven-star play going on Saturday, our six-star play going on Sunday, uh, the six-star plays in football 2-0 and so far this season. So don't miss out. You can go grab that package right now as I speak over at DocSports.com. CFL is available right now as I speak. Baseball available Friday at 11.30 a.m., 8.30 a.m., excuse me, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. All right, let's get to Friday night college football. It is the battle between Utah and USC. You will see the host of this one. Listen, when I see Utah's playing, there's a lot of times only one play I'm going to make. There's an option. You either play on the Utes when the line is reasonable or you pass the game. The reason I'm recommending to play on the Utah Utes tonight in this game, first of all, it fits my power ratings. Uh, this line is a little bit below where I power rated this particular game. And one of the reasons I look to play Utah every week, even though we don't, we probably play them two or three times a year, but we rarely play against them, is because we know we're going to get a well-coached football team. We know we don't got to worry normally about guys missing tackles on a final play of a game when you've got eight men deep, like we saw with the Houston Cougars. You know that guys are going to have their heads in the game for the Utah Utes when they're coached by Kyle Whittingham, and that's what I expect again tonight. When Utah gets beat outright or loses against the spread, it's normally because they weren't the better team of the two that were on the field. They don't normally shoot themselves in the foot. And I expect the same kind of effort tonight from both the coaching staff and relaying the message to the players on the field for the Utah Utes. As far as USC, the same cannot be said. I mean, Clay Helton, very good chance he's out soon. It's almost a must win for him tonight. We all know that must win in college football or in any league, in any sport uh, for a head coach doesn't mean will win as we see guys get axed all the time. Clay Helton may be next on the chopping block. So it is a big game for them, but they get a lot of bumps and bruises. And Slovis, the kid that's playing quarterback for USC. Let's not forget a couple of months ago, he was the fourth string quarterback on the USC depth chart. He threw three interceptions against BYU, which, you know, basically cost them their chance at landing in the win column in that one. And, I, and now he's got to step up against a, an excellent not only athletic and excellent as far as excellence as far as the talent on the field with that Utah defense, but extremely well coached defensive unit. I don't think he's going to fare well in this one. I don't think the Trojans are going to fare well in this one. And we're going to recommend to play on the Utah Utes minus the points. Real quick note, by the way. Uh, Utah comes into this on a 12-5 and spread run on the road. And as far as USC is concerned, just had to put on the cheaters and, and make sure. They've only covered seven of the last 27 games overall. They're 7, 19, and 1. Utah, you know, building bankrolls when they go on the road against the number. We'll back them here. Recommending to play on Utah minus the points over USC Friday night. Don't forget also Friday night, 11 p.m. Pacific. I will post my plays for Saturday's NASCAR. They're racing on Saturday this week. We're on an 8-1 run the last nine, 15 and 4 since early May. We're up about $5,000 for $100 per unit better as a NASCAR since early May. Going to pass this week's UFC, just didn't like the card. But again, Friday night by 11 p.m. Pacific, I will have my NASCAR picks uh, available for Saturday's race. All right, that's going to do it for us for Friday. Best of luck to you on Friday night. If you like these videos, click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. I do appreciate those who have done so thus far. I'm Scott Spritzer, Doc Sports. Com. Let's put Friday in the win column, and we'll be right back here probably early, like late Friday night, early Saturday no morning, but definitely no later than 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific on Saturday. We'll get you a free play from Saturday's college football. Have a great Friday, everybody.